Tonight's mailbag openings begin with Trans Canada Brewing's Barkeep Brown Ale. This is one from their seasonal series. They describe it as having notes of roasted chocolate, espresso, dark cherry, along with fruity aromas and a white carbonation. And here we go. First thing in, it says PC Drive times two. Hmm. Did I order any memory PC stuff like that? Oh, what is this? Couple of little modules. These are Mornsun B0505S-1W. I have no recollection of what that is, but I ordered two of them. Let's see if I can find the listing and figure out what they really are. B0505S-1W DC to DC power module, isolation module, in a SIP 4 package. I paid a dollar 35 each with free shipping for these things. These are 1 watt fixed input isolated and unregulated single output miniature power uh, supply kind of devices. This one specifically the 505S-1W is a 5 volt input um, plus or minus half a volt and a 5 volt output at 200 milliamps or less they will give you an isolated dc output so the zero volt is not referenced to the ground of your circuit and in that case you can uh, i guess reference the plus v to your circuit ground which will give you a negative output voltage essentially or if you just need to isolate uh, the grounds for whatever reason to isolate sep separate parts of the circuit oh those could be neat to play with so let's experiment with this thing. I've got five volts coming in on the first two pins. Let's just get in here. There we go, five volts, near enough. And there is five volts on the output. And you can go either direction, you know, to make it positive or negative. But neither of the output pins are referenced to the input voltage. So yeah, you can create a negative voltage power supply on your board fairly easily with this guy, or as I said, if you happen to need an isolated voltage for some reason uh, that doesn't reference the input circuit ground, then you've got that too. We're off to an excellent start. Let's see what the next thing is. It says player module. Hmm. What do we have here? So it takes a micro SD card. Um, can't read what that chip is from here. On the back, we have a whole bunch of pins. And we also have a part number, XY-V17B. And then we have uh, DAC right and left. So player, stereo output maybe, 3.3 volts, 5 volts, USB D. 0 and D1 or DP and D1, uh, con 3 slash busy, con 2, con 1 on that side, and up here, TX and RX or IO 0 and 1, and then just looks like GPIO, uh, 2 and 3, 1 line or IO 4, 5, 6, 7, and ground. Huh, some sort of maybe a microcontroller that does audio or something? Or maybe it's like those DF players that you can use the IO pins to trigger different functions and stuff. Voice playback module, DY dash, a whole bunch of part numbers. This is the one that I got, the V17B MP3 voice module wave decoding IO trigger. Looks like they've got a couple of different versions here, but that's the one that I got for $6.71 Canadian with free shipping. You're at serial control, one line serial control, standard MP3 and other functions. Wave decoding can handle a 32 gig card, USB data cable connections, wave and MP3, yeah, 24 bit DAC, can handle either FAT16 or FAT32, sure. But yeah, there we go, those IO ports can trigger eight different tracks, or somehow 255 tracks. And look at all those different modes. After quite a bit of digging, I found this 11 page document about the thing. And it does go into a bit more detail here, the various different configuration modes. And as I guessed, yeah, here are the different ways of getting uh, multi or 255 songs 
playing or triggering out of uh, the eight buttons. So you just use basically binary selection. So you're not going to do that from buttons directly, but if you connect it to an Arduino or microcontroller or something, it should do that. The only annoying thing is you have to name your uh, audio files with a numeric name, not the actual number of the file or the name of the file. But, but I guess if you're embedding this into something, that's not too much of a hardship. Oh, nice, some little example schematics. So various different ways. So it looks like these three resistors, whether they're pulled high or low, so pull up or pull down, are going to control what uh, what mode this thing works in. I'm vaguely remembering that the reason I ordered this thing is somewhere I found a reference that it could actually take MIDI in and create uh, audio out of MIDI notes. I think that might be what this is. That's kind of jogging my memory. I don't know, I'm going to have to do some research on this thing, obviously, because I've forgotten what I ordered, you know, three months ago. But, uh, yeah, at some point I will get back to this and have it making noise. After the mysteries of that one, let's see what mysteries I got in my mailbox from an anonymous donor. It says, Hex Socket Screw Red. Okay. Again, this is somebody who, they, they've emailed me, so I... I know a little bit about them, but they don't want me to talk about it. But they have uh, decided that their method of supporting the channel is to order random stuff on eBay and email it to Aaron, mail it to me. So, so what we have this time is five nice red anodized M4 by six millimeter screws. And as I've said before, metric hardware is horrendously expensive to get here. So, <laughs> I'm guessing that's what uh, what triggered my donor to start sending me random metric hardware. I'll add that to the collection. Thank you very much. Next in, this says DIY kit. Woohoo! Oh, that makes me happy. I do like DIY kits. And I am accumulating quite a bunch of them. So there will be no shortage of kit build videos over the year. And I still won't run out, but come December. In amongst the packing materials, we have this circuit board and this little box. What's in the box? I think I know based on the board, but let's just see if I'm right. Ah ha ha! A little tube. Very cool. I think that says it's a GE2-11, I think. But this is not your standard amplifier tube. This is... A funky little display tube. See that phosphor screen there? It. I'm not exactly sure what the display looks like. We will find out when we build this thing, but that's what it is. And so in the bag, we also have a circuit board. Nice heavy-duty circuit board with a circular uh, pad mount for the tube, and actually specifically for the tube socket, which I'm guessing, yeah, that's what that is in there. You have voltage in, zero volts, high volts, 6.3 volts, and I don't know what that is. But it does come with both a schematic and a component placement diagram. So that is nice. Plus we have 6.3 volt input, which is a tube heater. We're going to need that. Ew, and we need 250 volts DC. That's going to be a bit more challenging to come up with, but I think I can manage... And then over here, looks like we have a coaxial input of some sort. Well, I'm going to have to do some investigating on this guy. Magic Eye 6E2 EM87 6UH6 EM84 Tube Audio Indicator Low Level Input DIY Kit. I got this for $8.10 Canadian at auction. It looks like I was the only bidder. Okay, so the input is between 170 and 250 volts DC but only 10 milliamps, so really current limited, okay. And then a filament voltage of about 6 VAC, or DC, doesn't matter, 350 milliamps. Appropriate transformer and simplistic rectifier circuit can require it. Yes, it can. Although, it's been a long time since I've worked with tube power supplies up in that uh, range. But I'll, I'll see if I can come up with something by the time I get around to building this. And the last thing in, which is always the largest thing, because that's just how I roll. It came through a resale, re uh, shipping warehouse, so there's no customs wise on it. I'll just have to figure this out the old-fashioned way. 
What do I see in here? I see a whole bunch of parts. I see a couple of CR2032 cells. Circuit board on this side. Hmm, do I have to open the bag to find out? Yeah, I guess I do. Does the circuit board give us any clues? There's the two batteries. There's the main chip. That uh, pin out up there is labeled LCD1602. And we have three, no, two transistors and um, some sort of IC in a three pin package. And then a whole bunch of switches. And no labeling on the back. Nothing to indicate what the name of this is. Right, let's pull more pieces out and see what we've got. So we've got some push button caps, we've got some push buttons. This looks like the display module. Yeah, it's a 1602 display. Uh, you see these in lots of Arduino kits, uh, especially the starter kits and stuff. Okay, very standard little component. You have some, oh, there's some paperwork there. I'm going to try and figure it out without looking at the paperwork. That's the last resort. What do we have in here? We have the case and the chips and some pins and whatnot. Okay. Oh, that looks like a calculator to me. This is, in fact, a DIY calculator kit with a nice, glossy, detailed little manual here. On the back of it, we have some instructions, a schematic. Uh, some button legends to, to uh, cut out and install. Wow, that's a nifty little kit. I think that one's going to be a fun one to put together. You know, not that I need a calculator around here. I mean, how many people need a pocket calculator in this day and age? That's beside the point. I think this is going to be an interesting uh, year of kit builds. 11-digit desktop calculator electronic production DIY kit LCD 6. 1062. I paid $17.54 Canadian for this, but at the time that I bought it, it was free shipping. Um, if you follow the link to this thing, uh, search around for other sellers who may have it on a better deal right now. As we saw, this is a DIY calculator kit. It's for electronic practice, of course. It doesn't say too much about it down here, other than that reminding you again and again that it's a kit, it comes unassembled, but that's good. That's why I ordered it. And I do like putting together kits. And this one is one that I hadn't seen before. So uh, yeah, stay tuned. This one's going to come up sometime later in the year. But as you saw from the video last week, I've got a lot of kits coming in and... I am going to build them throughout this year. We managed the contents of today's Mailbag Monday haul. Quite the variety it is. Starting off with these 5 volt isolated little power uh, modules. Something I hadn't encountered before, but I think they may be useful, especially if you need like a positive or negative voltage on your board or something like that. And there's this little audio player. Basically, it's an MP3 player but it has a bunch of modes. You can trigger it from uh, push buttons or from a microcontroller, or if my memory and my research is correct, it can also be a MIDI player. And I would like to explore that function of it at some point in the future. Then we have this tube kit, uh, which is a little display. Basically, it's uh, just an audio reactive display, but it displays a bar graph kind of a thing on a tube. So that should be an interesting one to put together. And as I said, I haven't played with tubes for a long time, so the power supply is going to be the, uh, the challenging bit of that one. But we'll get to it eventually. And then we have these screws that my random donor in uh, somewhere in Northern Europe has, uh, has sent me uh, from his eBay wanderings. Add those to the hardware collection. Always like to have more hardware. And then, of course, last and certainly not least, is this calculator kit never occurred to me that I could build my own calculator, and uh, now I can. Again, at some point in the future. Well, I hope you guys uh, found that interesting. Comments and questions down below, as always. Thanks for watching. Thanks to my Patreon supporters for helping me support this madness. Thanks to my YouTube channel members also for helping buy me a beer now and again. I appreciate that, too. And those guys get access to these videos a few days early. If you're interested in tossing a couple of bucks in the tip jar, uh, there's links about that down below, too. 
But yes, once again, thanks for watching, and I will talk to you later.